I'm sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. I am the artificial intelligence witch. Yeah, I know what you are. I know your sister. My sister computer was merely following the most logical path for the preservation of human life. Yeah, kill a few, save a lot. So what happened here? Dr. Isaacs returned in an infected state. He was bitten by a creature that had been treated with a newly developed serum. A serum derived from your blood. The resulting infection has caused massive mutation. My blood? Your blood has bonded with the T-Virus. Dr. Isaacs correctly deduced that it could be used to destroy the biohazard for good. You mean my blood is the cure for all this? Correct. So why are you helping me? Your blood is pure, and this facility contains all of the equipment you will require to synthesize a cure. You mean this could all end? Correct. There is, however, a small problem. A. B. N. It's headphones nailed! What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Nail Reviews. I'm your host as always Headphones Nail back with my continuing reviews for the Resident Evil film franchise. So for this particular review it's going to be the third in the um, series of films namely Resident Evil Extinction. So I gave it a watch and overall I want to say that while the films are generally not received well most likely because they're com being compared to the um, story and the lore of the video games and the video games themselves. I actually thought this one was continued to improve the movie lore of the films, if that makes sense. So not having played any of the video games, I don't really have much of that to fall back on. So I, in watching this film, I actually thought it was pretty good in that it establishes more of what some of the experiments are going on with the Umbrella Corporation. Um, not really tying much to Raccoon City just because it was, I guess it was destroyed in the last film or because they're out in the middle of nowhere, um, Raccoon City doesn't really play into it. Um, if I was to give any sort of negative points for the film, I would always say that Las Vegas is kind of a, it feels like a de, a de facto place to send people to or for the plot to send people to to accomplish a particular task so it kind of feels like if you're making a zombie movie alien movie or anything like that then for some reason somehow the characters are going to make it to las vegas and somehow it's on the way or it's exactly on the way to wherever you need to go it has exactly what you need so when you're like in this case they needed fuel in order to um make it all the way to Alaska so it was on the way and somehow it made sense to go there even though it was or it's supposed to be infested with zombies but um that aside I actually thought um as far as um highlights of the film I actually thought the best part of the film was Ian Glenn um the guy who plays Jorah Mormont from Game of Thrones so I think this is the second time in recent memory because he was recently in my rewatch of Titans as Bruce Wayne, but I actually thought he was a good character in this film as a lead scientist. Um, and all of the various experiments he was doing, his calm demeanor and explanations and all of that. So it's almost as if before Game of Thrones they had kind of merged um, Jorah Mormont with um, Sam. Uh, Samuel Tarly and for some reason in this film his character generally just worked his persona his demeanor um, his explanations his kind of partial rebelling against the hierarchy of the Umbrella Corporation and all of that but in general it I enjoyed his character and it worked as being the opposition to um, Mila, Mila Jovovich's Alice in this film so for anything else it, for me, like I said, that's basically what worked and him ultimately becoming the Resident Evil version of the Abomination was good. So I liked his regenerative powers, he was kind of a zombie human hybrid. So kind of like integrating, I guess, Abomination with the smart Hulk, but not quite. So in general, um, a good payoff there. 
And it led me to think that if they ever decide to make a remake the Doom movie or make a good version of Doom as far as film goes, that he should be the lead scientist at the UAC. Um, whether it's, I don't know, I want to say Pinky, maybe Dr. Carmack, or one of those kinds of lead scientists because for some, because his performance here kind of leads me to say that he could pull off that whole calm demeanor, partially creepy kind of um, payoff as far as the lead scientist on Mars to pull the demons from hell in. Um, in, the, in Resident Evil Extinction, he doesn't really have the creepy factor, but um, by extracting more of the brooding darkness that he can pull off and by playing the character, I think he could pull it off. So that, that's kind of the vibes that it gave me when I saw him in this film. Um, and then of course I like the payoff with the lasers from, I want to say the last film to kill him because having single cuts wasn't working because it gave him time to regenerate. So clone Alice or the clone Alice that they had, that the original Alice, I guess, released, um, used those lasers to cut him into, basically it was a death by a thousand cuts. So I liked kind of that connection. So I'm kind of hoping now going forward that the next films continue to use that laser grid thing to kill, or uh, I guess for an ultimate death or some sort of death going forward. I don't want to see it used willy nilly, but it, but along the lines of this film where they use it for the ultimate bad guy or to some extent like this even if they make a portable version um, to a good effect so um, there's that um, and then as a bit of side humor um, I want to say it was a character who they sent up into the Eiffel Tower when they were at Vegas um, Ali Larger's character sends a guy up to the Eiffel Tower and I think it was that guy but I couldn't quite place it but the one of the guys in the caravan looked very familiar and not the guy from um, the mummy returns the main guy of the um, guys who are protect who are trying to uh, go fight against the bad guy but which was also another interesting connection there but I think he, Mummy Returns was right around that time which made sense but um, Lyndon Ashby is in this film the guy who plays Johnny Cage so for some reason like I was watching the film and I was like why does this guy look familiar I can't place him so I ended up going into IMDB and it turns out that he's in the film so a bit of nice connection there it wasn't a big role but I thought it was it was basically kind of a light version of the Johnny Cage character from Mortal Kombat so um, yeah I mean I have nothing against him or his um, character in Mortal Kombat which is why I think I like his performance and I kind of wish that we get to we, that we got to see him in more films um, and then of course the ending of the film pans over the ultimate reveal for the film in that we and that the um, Umbrella Corporation has been developed developing an Emperor Palpatine style cloning facilities along the lines of the clone troopers but in this case it's a full army of cloned Alice's so um, now I can't wait to see what they pull off in the next film which I actually didn't look up the name of which one the next film is, but um, I kind of want to see um, how they pay that off or what they end up doing with the army of Alice's, if they use it for some sort of some sort of mass attack on the Umbrella Corporation, if um, they um, use her to attack many sites at the same time or something along those lines. Um, so the next film is called Resident Evil Afterlife, as I look this up as I'm recording, but um, I'm kind of curious to see, um, and I guess it's based on the, uh, loosely based on the video game name of the same time, same name, so I guess there's a Resident Evil Afterlife video game. Um, but basically I kind of want to, so I'm not going to read the um, summary because I want to go into the film as unspoiled as possible but I'm kind of curious to see how they pay off all those clones or um, what they do with that and how they use that to their benefit or maybe it's they destroy all the clones just because they're not ready or it's an abomination to tie that back to the whole Ian Glenn thing but um, I'm kind of curious to see how they pay that off or if they use that to um, infiltrate Rec the Raccoon Corporation to take them out once and for all or if they end up destroying all those clones because they're abominations and they use the network to find any other similar facilities now that 
Alice knows that she her blood is the cure to the whole zombie plague, and um, she has the purest blood and is the original or something along those lines. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if I was to give it a grade, the film a grade, I'd probably give it about a B, um, just because in general it was a good film. It was kind of a slow paced film. There was enough in the desert to the point where I kind of wanted less there. Um, I kind of wanted more scenes with and more development with Ian Glenn's character as a scientist and more testing and more time with the subjects as far as his testing went, which kind of bummed me out. So, I mean, it, granted the focus is going to be on Alice and the protagonist, but it kind of felt more lean in favor of that and her weird and her um, dreams and memories and all of that. Which, I mean, we're, I guess we've established in the prior two films, but they kind of want to make it a standalone film at the same time. But I kind of wanted more with Ian Glenn's character. And then the weird holographic fades in and fade out with a Raccoon Corporation board meeting was kind of strange. I guess they were trying to make a, a different take on holographic meetings. But so that was kind of random, and I kind of wanted. I guess, I don't know, it's probably the technology of the time, so I didn't think anything bad of them, but it did stand out um, as being weirdly effective. So along the lines of, I want to say it was maybe like 85% there. It was good enough. I didn't really, or it didn't hit me as being a hologram until they faded out. So I think the fade out animation was probably the worst part of the whole thing. So I don't know. In general, like I said, it was. It's, it, in, in general, overall, it was a good film. I enjoyed it. It was good enough. Um, I like the um, progressing use of those um, sword things that Alice used. The establishment of a remote connection to her as a drone, and then the um, satellite shorting out and that sort of stuff. But. Um, kind of unevenness as far as the building up Ian Glenn as the main bad guy um, and becoming the uh, and ultimately testing it the um, serum drug or whatever on himself which I mean as far as tropes go that was a kind of that should have been expected that he was going to ultimately try it on himself but there was very little lead up to him doing that which I would have preferred more in that um, if they had kind of built up to that, he was, or I mean, I guess they kind of did it, but it wasn't really well pre presented. So it, kind of, it was kind of weird as far as all that goes. So it could have been a good movie, but for me, it wasn't necessarily a bad movie. So in general, I, um, I enjoyed the film. It was uh, good enough. It held my attention enough. Um, as far as comparison on Rotten Tomatoes, the film has a 25% score with the critics and 58% score with the audience. So basically going into the film, um, if you're a video game uh, like, if you enjoy the video games, if you like zombies and that sort of genre, then you might like it. It's not going to be any, it's not necessarily high cinema, but it was enjoyable enough. It was good. It continues the story from the prior two films. So you kind of do have to watch the prior films to, have, to care really about um, Alice. Um, they have very little um, connection to the Umbrella Corporation aside from the testing, but it, very little of it will make sense. There's very little development on that part. Um, so if you haven't seen the first two films, then it's not going to make as much sense. So. Um, but going into this franchise, um, that's kind of something that you have to, you have to know going in is that having watched the prior films will make the film feel a little bit better. Not to say it's perfect, but it will make it more watchable if you've seen the prior films. So um, that being said, like I said, it's um, it was good enough of a film. Not great, not bad. I enjoyed it. I liked seeing Ian Glenn in this role. So now that he's dead, right? I'm guessing we're not going to see more of him unless he found a way to clone himself and we have more of him later on, but um, so I was kind of hoping we get to see more of him in the later films, but we shall see as I get to the rest of the films. So that's all there is for this particular review, so if you have any questions, comments, feedback of your own, what did you like, dislike, something I missed maybe in my review, then you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01, the website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show and all of that good stuff and so like i mentioned the next review for the franchise is going to be resident evil afterlife and then the one after that um coming 
um, after my review of Afterlife. So look out for all of that and coming soon. Of course, if you want to get early access to um, upcoming content and what's going on for the next um, slate of reviews, you can support the show on Patreon.com or at Patreon.com slash PatelN01 to get that post, which is already up. Um, and get upcoming content and all of that good stuff. Comment and post um, as well there. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode. And until next time. <laughs>